Stab up, you have high unrest. We actually don't have any unrest. We had high unrest here, but then we migrated away. So the uh, the the decision we took to start the purge applied a province modifier that increased local unrest by like 15 base. But then we just left. So it didn't come with us. We have we have no unrest here because of that. Severed ear just like full annexed our neighbor. Whoa. He, he left him with one province that has one settler. He left alive one orc. One. <laughs> That's nuts. Well, he's not going to be a valid rival. Our truce is up. His whole army is... No, oh, he's being besieged. This should be a safe war deck then. Count's League won't defend him. We have to fight Gallant Friends. Who have six troops. Our soon-to-be subject has zero, so it's seven on six. This guy's on tech three. I feel I feel safe. I'm a little I'm a little gun shy. A little bit gun shy. But I think we're okay to declare this. This guy's gonna get separate piece, so. We're doing the conquest of silver docks. I should leave behind a single troop or so. So that after he gets separate pieced by the the war leader that like, he's a secondary participant, I think. Once he gets separate pieced, I just want to make sure that the garrison doesn't get a chance to recover. Let's go try to kill this guy's army. I'm back. Stop running. Adventuring maps. Lose money to gain adventuring efficiency. Hmm. I, I don't need the adventuring efficiency. Gained anti-monstrous versus severed ear. Okay. Okay, where did he go? Why did he leave? We're so low on manpower that I, I think I want to do what I can to to try to minimize attrition. Pioneers and adventurer traditions. We have minus 20% uh, attrition force. Of course. Very first roll of dice is a disease outbreak. Obviously. Like you do. I don't know where he's going. Maybe he's trying to like walk around or something. Let's just get this army path it through so that it's a uh, it's ready to start the siege as soon as that fort falls, which is definitely going to happen right now. Man, it's so nice not having to worry about rebels while walking around compared to being a dwarf. Bye bye, stupid uh, orcs. Get them out. We need prestige again. We're definitely going to need high prestige to placate our subject potentially, so depending on how much money he has, yeah, I'll do something like this. And I think I'll wait till he's willing to agree. Because it shouldn't take too much longer. He might come back and try to unsiege it, but I think we win this siege before he gets his capital back. Probably.
There's some loot here in this colony. Wallianvar, thank you for sub, man. How's it going? Come on, buddy. Take the fort. Take the fort. Take the fort. Take the fort. I need the subject. Vassalizing this guy might cause a change to our valid rivalries. Could be a little bit awkward. Is he actually going to win? He's already at negative seven. Fortunately, the garrison's only at 100. I need two siege ticks. So I think we win the race. Also, we should have control of this node soon. I'll be able to start using improved inland routes. We would already have it if we had the level 3 center of trade that we should have gotten. Okay, auto fall. It'll auto fall it on the next tick because it's below 100. Now, do we want our subject to have his colony? We have three options that I can think of. Take the province and then force vassalize the difference, keep the province for ourselves. split the cost between Abin and Dip. Uh, we could burn down the province and then release a one province minor subject. Be easier to control him. I won't have to have any Abin points spent right now. We could seize it ourselves. And then finish it, but we'd be over the, the colony limit since we only have one colonist. The, the issue with this is that you can't grant... I'm like 90% sure you can't grant colonies. So if I if I full annex him right now... If I do this, and then I, and then I release him, he doesn't have a core here, so he doesn't get that, and then I can't grant it to him. And he can't send his colonist here while it's occupied, so we would have to wait 247 divided by 45 years. Five more years before it finishes. Isn't annexing the province ought to complete the colony? If we force vassalize the difference, then yes. I could do it like that, yeah. We could take the province, force vassalize him, he'll get a completed, auto-completed city. Then we just return this to him, so I don't have to pay the admin points for it. Could work. It ruins the de the like development of this province because the autonomy is going to be super high for him. It's also the less uh, the least aggressive expansion to do it that way. I like that. Sure. And it lets us have a nice long 15-year truce instead of a 5-year truce. Works for me. Hey, Blade Breaker, Severed Ear are our valid rivals. Let's rival our neighbor, whose truce is up in 61, about 4 years. He's not going to be a valid rival after this monthly tick, probably. Blade Breaker is, he looks big, but he probably just has a bunch of Siberian Frontiers. Yeah, one, one, two, three, four, five Siberian Frontiers. So he's just a four province guy. He looks huge though. Got 9k troops. Okay, I don't mind reveling him. One ally. That's me. He has no friends? Yeah, we can rival him. Yeah, he's also an orc. We need to murder him. Seven percent institution tech penalty. Um, do we take the penalty or do we dev push the institution right now for economic power? Deving kind of does multiple things for us. Gets rid of the devastation. It you know increases our economy. Gets the institution sooner. We're not wasting points paying institution tech penalty. I don't need Diplotech for anything, really. Roomba on Twitch's new predictions thing. Do you think they round up or down on points? Uh, I don't know. I, I assume it's a zero-sum game. I, I don't think that they're taking any points out of the pool. So... I don't know. Whoa. Art Grinder has a 3916. 
Let's stay away from Heart Grinder. Wait, isn't... No, that's not the guy. That's Marhold. Okay, I'm not coring that thing, so we're just going to grant it to him. And then uh, we only have 10% Vassal income, so we will divert trade. And we'll start improving relations with that guy. We do have room for just the one subject and the one ally. Mm. It did instant complete the city, but he has to pay for the core. So he's already starting a new colony. Is uh, kind of good. Finish the city's quite fast. And as expected, Severed Ears stopped being a valid rival. Man, our provinces are so, so small, they're hard to click on. Okay, truce with small fellows in 64. 9k troops on tech 3 versus our tech 4. I've got 8,000 troops versus his 9,000 troops. I'm, I'm concerned about how weak we are militarily, so I want to be kind of cautious here. Do you have one of those scary as hell generals? He's got a 4-4-2 and a 2-2-3. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to fight that. I'm not going to go over there and die. Those forests are death. The Orcish Death Forests. Yeah, I didn't talk about it yesterday, but uh, I, I did talk to my moderators and we've started the process. YouTube is going to be coming back soon. Um, I'm handing over control of the YouTube channel to some of my trusted moderators and we're going to be, there's going to be content on YouTube. Exactly what or when, I, I don't know, but um, it, it is coming back. So there is that. What do you think Paradox's new 1.31 mechanics will do with migration? And how do you think it'll affect Anbenar? I haven't read Dev Diaries because I don't read Dev Diaries. Because they're pointless fluff. Um, so I don't even know what 1.31 is going to be about. I typically wait until the patch is like within a week of release and then I start to read up on it. I don't see any reason to get hyped for mechanics or stuff you know, three to six months early when half of the shit Paradox says they're gonna do doesn't make it into the game. I just don't care. I don't care what they act like they're... Do you guys remember when they acted like they were gonna add? I swear it's been two or three times at this point over the last few years. They've acted like they're gonna add a uh, releasable core map mode, right? Like, you'd be able to click on a province and then say, oh, you know, I can I can click on this and then see what their cores would look like. Never gonna happen, man. Let's switch to improve relations since we do have some aggressive expansion. I like this little area. Let's be honest, I like this game. I like Anbinar. It's all good, man. We'll sack, uh... Let's sack a little bit of prestige just to get our power projection as high as possible. There's value in being at 95 versus 85. It's also uh, less likely that I forget and our PP gets small. It's always nice when your PP stays big without paying any attention to it. Hmm, I wish I had an interaction to just steal his manpower. Sadly, that's only an event. It's not an interaction I can control. You can't watch the stream anymore? Why not? Did I offend you, or do you just have to leave? <laughs> d and I'm gonna go play Dungeons & Dragons, but I'm playing Dungeons & Dragons. I'm a... We're gonna play as Lady Yennefer Silgarion. She's a witch. And a lion and, and a wardrobe. Okay, tough, tough uh, decision here, actually. So, we only get 25% of normal government reform progress. There's there's pros and cons to both of these options. We can go to positive three stab and have access to rigorous, rigorous researchers. I feel like they may have nerfed the frequency of rigorous researchers from its original release. It doesn't happen as often as it used to. You used to get it like... You could get it every every year, it felt like, if you had all the conditions met. Now it's quite rare, but still, it's monarch points. Um, it's also just good to be a positive three stab. 
Alternatively, we can take this because it's worth many years worth of government reforms. That's 6.25 years of government reform progress. Probably, it's, it's, that's tough. It's really tough, actually. If we weren't playing with basically vanilla government ideas, I would probably go with the government reform progress, but government stuff is pretty bleh. Like, vanilla stuff? That one is good, but we don't actually need this. Well, never mind. Maybe, maybe. We could still take this, and then we could pay stab later on to switch to this. And we get native assimilation plus 50%. And 35%. So 85% native assimilation? Good lord, can you imagine? Imagine the settler, the, the goods produced. We already have 40% from something. This event. That means like this colony is, is on track to finish with an extra one goods produced. Okay, government reform progress. Monarch points we can get in other ways. Government reform progress is harder to earn. Our guy died. I'll buy a new one. The Flying Hound wants some Kanatieri. He is about to die, so... All the more reason to rent out our army and, you know, steal his treasury. Look, he's about to die with 63 ducats in the bank. I can use those 63 ducats. He's... He's definitely not going to have his capital fall in two days. It'll never happen. I'm definitely not wasting three ducats right now. Six ducats, technically, because it's two months minimum. It never falls 21% of the time. See? I was right. When you form a nation, government will change. Is it the same as the dwarf events? Hopefully this is a conquest war, right? Yeah, I, I, I do want him to just disappear. Now he has issues with me not having land access. I just have to ask for access through my ally. Wait, like, two days. Please don't die yet. Here, give me your treasury. Thank you. What a generous donation from this, this silly tribe of goblins. How, how nice of them. Gain Dipple points or gain Admin points? Probably the Admin points for the innovative ideas. Modernization of the forts. I have no forts, game. This is the second event you've given me to raise my fort maintenance. I don't have forts. I mean, I still benefit from fort defense, but like, it's, it keeps on trying to raise my maintenance on forts, of which I have zero. So it's kind of silly. Okay, anyone else want to give me all of their money? Anyone else at war? I mean, just because there's no Kanateri alert doesn't mean there aren't people who want your troops. If you black flag them, you can potentially rent them to randos in the middle of nowhere. Like this guy. He's not, he's not even at war, he just has rebels. So we can maybe make some more cash there. Try to upgrade our center of trade at some point. Let's uh, take our army into our allies land and use them to get ourselves black flagged and see if there's an opportunity for some contract. The sh oh, oh man, I just realized. We can't use our battle mage for Kondateri contracts because there's a ridiculous bullshit rule that your leader can't control Kondateri armies. And I've looked everywhere, there's nothing you can do to stop that, and there's nothing you can do to stop... You have to be independent to rent Kondateri. You can't be a, You can't even rent Kondateri if you're a tributary. And those things can't be changed. This guy will give us 47 monies. He's got rebels. Noble rebels that should march there. He 
also doesn't know who we are, so he can't get upset with us. Perfect. Just, uh, you know, pay me. The perfect contract. <laughs> I'm just gonna stand here and drill. Never cancel the contract, and he can't do anything about it because he doesn't know who we are. Unknown attitude. Make preparations for a future attack. It's become a real issue for you that some of our neighbors refuse to accept the one true faith. Lose money to gain tradition? Nice. Can't you make the heir into a general? Uh, nope. As a theocracy, as the type of theocracy government thing we are, we can only make our ruler into a general. And you also can't rent your heir out as a Kunatiri commander. For reasons. This thing, I mean, it's it's so exploitable. Paradox should just make it so that you can't rent Kunatiri to people who don't know who you are. Or, oh, I don't know, maybe, possibly. If you send them an offer of Kunatiri, maybe, as part of the paperwork, you know, you tell them who you are. <laughs> like, shouldn't that be a thing? He just gave me money, he's got a contract with me to pay me every month, and... No idea who we are. It's a secret. You should just reveal your capital to him whenever you send a diplomat. If I send a diplomat to him and say, hey, want some troops? I've got to tell him, you know, just vaguely, from what part of the world we hit, where we're from. Seems quite reasonable to me. Yeah, we're using the Nigerian Prince strategy. And we actually have positive manpower. Holy crap. Only is at 900 troops? 900, 900 peoples? I quite like inventuring. I feel like we could have got a lot more Monarch points if we had uh, migrated a bit longer. But this is a really great state. It's it's pretty hard to pass up on this. We're going to have issues keeping this guy loyal long term, I think. So, mm, oh, he's going into debt. That's good for me. Wow, he makes a lot. Four ducats from taxation. He probably has, like, maxed out adventuring stats. Do I get Vassal Tax Income Tax on that 4? It might make me more money to, uh... Not divert his trade. I think I should. Anyway, I think we placate him. Now? Just so that we get the advantage of our prestige recovery? Cost me some, uh... What's it called? The morale of armies, but that's okay. I want to get him as close to 50 as possible while also having trade active. Oh no, you're upset with the contract? Well, you should have read the fine prints. I said I was going to go home and drill for all of eternity while you pay me. Did your subject pay to move the capital back? Uh, looks like he did. There may have been some actual, like, reasonable logic to that, though. It's got a center of trade, and, uh... It, it set the autonomy to zero in his highest development province instead of this one, so... When I conquered it, I set the autonomy to a high number, and then when I granted it to him, it was at that high number, so... Kind of expensive, but not completely unreasonable. Like, I might have actually considered it if I had been in his situation. Five prestige for our colony. And we ended up with uh, assimilated natives, 1.02. We have an extra basic, like like five extra base production worth of iron. Nice. The first step. This isn't going to like give me development in every province I own if I wait, is it? Nah. This mod is so well polished, there's no way they'd make a mistake like that. Oh, took that too fast. You can save uh, a little bit of admin if I if I do a toggle here.
We're not ahead of time on military tech, though. I think I just pay the admin points. It's not very much, right? It's 20% of... What? 13 times 10 times half. It's 65 points minimum, and then we're paying 76 instead. So it's like an extra 9 admin. It's not worth messing with for one, one core.